Hello to all you passive income investors looking for dividend stocks with elevated dividend yields. In this video, I've got two high yield dividend stocks for you to consider. Altria Group with a dividend yield of 9.5%, Ford with a dividend yield of 5.3%. Which one of these is the better dividend stock to buy for passive income investors? Well, I'll answer that in this video. So follow along. Let's compare these two dividend stocks to answer which one is the better one to buy. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, of course, one of the first things that dividend stock investors consider is the dividend yield, but it's not the only thing, and it should not be the only thing. Altria Group does have a better dividend yield at 9.5% compared to 5.3% for Ford, but there are more things to consider than just the dividend yield. And one of those first things to consider is the dividend payout ratio. The dividend payout ratio measures the percentage of earnings per share that's paid out in dividends. It's a measure of how sustainable dividends are. For instance, in this first example here, you have a dividend per share of $1.75 and earnings per share of $2. That means that's a dividend payout ratio of 88%. That's relatively high. That means if earnings per share were to decline below $1.75, that company would be paying more in dividends than it's bringing in in earnings. And just like a household that cannot spend more than it brings in in earnings for the long term, in the same way, a business cannot pay dividends more than it brings in in earnings per share for the long term. Sure, in the short term, it can borrow money to pay the dividend, but eventually it will exhaust its borrowing capacity. Additionally, it can pay dividends out of its savings, but eventually it will run out of savings. That's why in the long term, if you want sustainable dividends, you want a dividend per share that's below earnings per share at a comfortable level, like the second example here, where you had a dividend per share of $2.75 and earnings per share of $10. That's a dividend payout ratio of 27.5%. For passive income investors, what this means is that the dividend is not only sustainable because even a drop in earnings per share of 50% would still mean that the dividend per share is below the earnings per share. But it also suggests that there is room for this company to increase the dividend payment. So investing in this company brings with it probability that the dividend per share will rise over the next several years. And finally, the last example where we have dividend per share of $3.50 and earnings per share of $1.45 that's a dividend payout ratio of 241%. The dividend payout is more than two times the earnings per share. When you see a situation like this, it's likely that this company is going to pause or reduce its dividend payment. That's very likely to happen in the near term unless the company can expand its earnings per share in a relatively short amount of time. So now that you understand the dividend payout ratio, let's look at the numbers for these two high yield dividend stocks. Altria Group with an earnings per share trailing 12 months that has fluctuated up and down above and below its dividend per share over the last decade. But for the most part, it has been above its earnings per share, save for this brief two year period here between 2020 and 2022. Still, I suspect going forward that Altria Group's earnings per share will exceed its dividend per share. Ford, meanwhile, also fluctuating up and down, but for the most part above its earnings per share, generating earnings per share above its dividend per share in the last decade, its dividend per share staying mostly stable with brief fluctuations as well. If I was to forecast the next few years, which one of these two companies is more likely to increase their dividend per share, I would say it would be Ford. Ford's prospects in generating cash flow from and cash flow and profits from its legacy auto segment have done really well. So I think it's got some really good prospects in the near term, to be sure. Similarly, it's important to consider the cash flow from operations. 
cash flow from operations is one of the most vital metrics I consider when making an investment decision. If any financial shenanigans are happening, looking at this metric can help uncover the fraud. Moreover, looking at profitability without considering cash flow from operations can lead to a misleading picture of a company's performance. For instance, look at the example I have created here. The company reported a net loss of $250. However, when you look at the cash flow from operations, it was a gain of $35. How can that be? Well, two expenses a company must report on the income statement are depreciation and stock-based compensation. Importantly, these are non-cash expenses. Money is not leaving the company for these expenses. In the case of depreciation, when a company buys a machine for $750, it pays all of that price up front. However, generally accepted accounting principles require that the company take the expense over a period the machine is expected to operate. So if the machine is expected to last for 10 years, the annual expense will be $75 per year for 10 years, even though the company paid the $750 cash at the time of the purchase. Also, when a company offers its employees a stock option, it's not parting with cash. However, it must record the cash value of the option as an expense on the income statement. So moving on to the working capital items, inventory management is the easiest way a company can increase cash flow. The simplest case is when a business has 100 inventory units, sells 30 units, and doesn't replace those units. The decision would reduce total inventory and increase cash flow. As you might already be thinking, this isn't sustainable. Eventually, the company will deplete all its inventory and go out of business. Accounts payable is the money that a company owes another company and has not paid yet. And accounts receivable is the opposite. A company can increase its cash flow by collecting payments faster and paying suppliers slower. If done with skill, companies at scale can take advantage of these timing differences to boost cash flow by a couple of percent annually. Costco is one example that employs this strategy masterfully. Overall, if you observe cash flow increasing unsustainably, you should expect a reversal of that trend. The other big risk to consider is if you see a company reporting substantial profits, but negative or weak cash flow due to rising accounts receivable. So now that you understand how important cash flow from operations is, look at the lead Altria Group has against Ford. 42.2% cash flow from operations to sales ahead of Ford's 7.81%. And Altria Group has been well ahead of Ford in this metric going back all decade long. It wasn't like a one-time thing where Altria Group exceeded Ford. This has been a long-standing competitive advantage for Altria Group. It's also one of the most profitable companies in the world. The next thing to consider is revenue growth, top line revenue growth. And you'd be surprised to see that both of these companies have generated revenue growth over the last decade. Altria Group growing its revenue from around 17 billion up to 20 billion, despite the fact that cigarette smoking is decreasing worldwide. Similarly, Ford has increased its revenue from a little under $140 billion up to $174 billion in the trailing 12-month period. Ford is transitioning to the EV model, and Altria Group is transitioning to the non-combustible smoking model, non-combustibles model. So they're both in a major transition, although... Ford, I think, will do better in this transition because its legacy auto segment is doing so well in the near term. Altria Group is more stricken with government regulations that are hurting its business. Still, it's done a good job increasing revenue, keeping its profit margins absolutely enlarged. So for the near term, Altria Group is doing well but they have that elevated risk that government intervention will continue increasing taxes on consumption will continue increasing. And so its transition is more of a question mark than Ford's transition. Finally, I wanted to consider these two on valuation and 
Looking at the forward price to earnings ratio, Altria Group is only slightly more expensive than Ford, trading at a forward price to earnings of 7.6 compared to the forward price to earnings of 6.5 for Ford. That being said, if I was to pick one of these two dividend stocks to buy, I would pick Altria Group. Altria Group comes with more risks for investors in dividend stocks. However, the upside is there for Altria Group if it can solve this transition effectively. The upside is much higher than Ford in the longer term. Near term, the risks are higher, but the upside is also higher and you're getting it for a similar valuation for one of the most profitable companies in the world. If you liked the video you just saw and you want to see more just like it, please subscribe to the channel. I can't keep this channel free without the support of viewers like you. And if you're already subscribed, thank you and I appreciate your support.